Hello everyone, um, I'm Karen Merriman. Today I thought I'd go over my Simon and Garfunkel record collection. Um, they're a duo from America, which I quite like. I'm going to show you my Simon and Garfunkel singles, LPs, and the solo Simon and Garfunkel records I've got. So I'm going to start with Simon and Garfunkel group records. The first one up is the single for Homeward Bound, 1966, backed with Leaves That Are Green. Um, it's got its centre punched out, but it's not too bad. It's got a couple of stickers in the label, which is all right. The record plays actually quite good. It's a mono single, UK mono single. It comes with its a juke, this jukebox strip, which I got with it. Leaves are green, Simon Garfunkel, and Homeward Bound. Not sure what that's all about, but anyway, it's nice to have. The Mrs. Robinson EP, which has Mrs. Robinson, April Comes, She Will, Scarborough Fair, Canticle, and The Sound of Silence. There's that. And we're on CBS. I think it's a mono. Might be a mono EP, not sure. It doesn't say stereo, so it's definitely mono. Uh, Simon and Garfunkel, The Boxer, Columbia Hall of Fame reissue from 1969. It's backed with uh, Baby Driver. Both songs from the Bridge Over Top of Water LP. It's got the original, probably American release date, March 1969. And we have Bridge Over Top of Water, an original UK, 1970, stereo single, and Keep the Customer Satisfied. <coughs> okay, now I'm going to have the LPs. So starting off with the Wednesday morning, 3 a.m. This was the day, first album from 1964. It was released in 64 in the States only, but it didn't come out in the UK until 1968. It's a stereo copy. All these are in stereo. I think there's one model somewhere. Yeah, all these are stereo. It's pretty good. I did like it on first listen, but I've grown to like it now. Um, you can tell the world, last night in Strange Room, Bleecker Street, Sparrow, Benedicta, Sound Science, Here's My Brother Peggy, Your Sun is Burning, and Wednesday morning, 3 a.m. I quite like the version of Time to Change on here as well. It's not an original copy from the 60s, it's a 70s <coughs> repressing from the Sunburst CBS label. <coughs> the plays well, plays through. So it'd be nice to have an original copy of this one, but this is finding an original of this is pretty hard. Because it didn't really do that well. Um, in the within critics or charts, I think so. Final original is not going to be easy. So there's that one. We have second album, Silence of Silence, which did better. Um, I like the cover. I like Simon Garfunkel's covers for some reason. Particularly this one. I really like this one. The back the songs. I like Silence of Silence. These are ugly green. Blessed Kathy's song. Homeward Bound. Richard Corey. Must be killing man. April comes she will. And I'm and I'm a rock. What do we really like? The names are Paul Simon and Art Garfunkel, of course. Uh, this copy is an original press. It's from the orange CBS label, 1966. Stereo. <coughs> yeah. We have uh, the US version of Sounds of Silence on Columbia, the stereo, which doesn't have the song Homeward Bound on, whereas European pressings of the album do, but US pressings of the album and Canadian pressings of the album don't. And it's like that with the CDs as well. It's on this nice Columbia label. Quite a flimsy record. Record. Sorry. It's a stereo. Nice label design. So yeah, that's that. Then we have um, Pass the Sage was Marion Times, 1966. This is a mono copy. I'd like to get the mono copies of the other ones, but um hopefully far too. It's got a nice laminate cover, flip backs, the songs. 
Like Scarborough Fair, Canticle, Patton's, Cloudy, 59th Street, Bridge Song, Feeling Groovy, The Diamond Constitution, Flowers Never Better With the Rainfall, For Emily Whenever I May Find Her, and The 7 O'Clock News, Silent Night. So here's one more looking here. Here's the in the sleeve. Some of the releases on there. Bob Dylan Great Tits up there. Um, Johnny Cash album up there. So, some interesting advertisements on here. And this is mono, as I said, because it doesn't have a stereo written across. It's quite a thick record. So it's a good album. Really good album. In fact, they're all good albums. Here's a stereo copy on the same label. It's got two in the sleeves for some reason. It's got what this one for some reason. And it's got this decker in her sleeve. There's the label. The record's in good nick though, so I've had these for a good few years now. It's just flimsier for some reason. I think this might be 70s, like later pressings, but still on the original CBS label. So we have a Netherlands pressing of Past Six Ages Marian Time, which has the US track listed because <clears throat> Home and Bound was on the UK the Sounds of Silence. Home and Bound was on the US Past Six Ages Marian Time and other pressings except for the UK. So it's a reissue on the Sunburst label. It seems a bit busted, but I'll uh, try and fix that tape. Yeah, it's quite scuffy and scratchy, but I think it still plays. It's going to be quite hard to get back in. <coughs> and then, um,. I was telling Tom that were successful and whatnot, you know. And um, then um, a film director, I think I got the album, Past the Sages Marian Time, and contacted Paul Simon to write the music for this film, The Graduates. Um, Simon Gaffin did the music for this. That's kind of how I got it, you know. Um, some previously re released material like The Sounds of Silence and Scarborough Fair Canticle and April Comes She Will and Big Bright Green Pleasure Machine. But there's. Um, some instrumentals metals from the film, and there was a new song called Mrs. Robinson, you know, which was um, later going to be in the next album. Yes. So yeah, it's for collectors. This one. In a sleeve. It's a bit busted. <laughs> We're on a blue CBS label. I think this was for the soundtracks, this one. But it's a nice label. Nice colour. In a sleeve, you get like. Simon Garfunkel, the album we're going to show next, Bob Dylan, Johnny Cash, so CBS had some interesting people. We have um, Bookends, which is the one I showed earlier. I like this album. I like uh, uh, Bookends theme instrumental, America, Old Friends Bookends theme, Mrs. Robinson, He's Shed Winter and At The Zoo. Look at something here. This is um, an original copy from the 60s, I believe. It's a stereo on CBS. I think, I'm not sure if UK Pressings came with a poster, but I know that US Pressings did. But um, this is what the poster looks like on the, the US Pressings. I, but I printed it in you know, my copy. We have um, the label CBS. This was the the Simon and Garfunkel studio album was missing for a while, um, and then I was I had I think I got Bridge Over Troubled Water first. I think I got the Greatest Hits, um, and then had uh, I had Bridge Over Troubled Water, the Greatest Hits, and then got the first two in a sh record shop, and then part and then past the time I found it online, and then there was this. In terms of studio albums, this was the only one I was missing for a bit, and then I got it. And we have um, a few copies of this exact album. Bridge Over Troubled Water, which was their final studio album. The sessions for Bridge Over Troubled Water were quite, you know, 
you know, tricky because Art Garfunkel uh, was away in Mexico shooting a film called Catch 22 uh, with the same director for The Graduate, Mike Nichols. And um, so the album was, I think, put on hold until Art got back. And that caused a bit of tension between Paul and Art. Uh, they began to fight during the sessions, but it was actually, you know, a great album. Tart Trek, Bridge of Water, El Condor, Paso Cecilia, Keep the Customer Satisfied, Boxer, Baby Driver, The Only Little Boy in New York, and Song for the Asking of My Favorites. But the whole album is great, despite, you know, including those tracks. These are the lyrics. In a sleeve. And this is the direction on CBS. I've had, I've, I've had quite a bit of trouble picking up this album. I picked up an original, um, but it was quite scratched. I, I, yeah, it was dirty, but I cleaned it. But the box I just was would not was the only track I couldn't fix. And it was quite loud and crackly as well. And then I got um, a reissue of my mum. Here's a reissue I bought online on the Sunburst. CBS like this is the sandwich one. So I've had this one for that one. But before this one was the original which was which I couldn't, you know, repair the boxer because it was, you know, dirty and it was scratched and I think I just get rid of it. And I'm give you this one, which is on the a red CBS label. That one, this is probably an 80s reissue of Bridge of Trouble Water. But the cover seems to be, some variants seem to be a bit darker. Yeah, these two are quite similar. They're a bit more brighter. This coffee. And then we have the the Simon Garfunkel Greatest Hits. This is not the copy I got from my mum. This is one I got a collection. It's really scratched up and it's probably unplayable. But I've got a couple of plain copies. This is an original pressing. I'm probably going to get original with the cover someday. This is the one my mum will give you, Greatest Hits. Yeah, this is some of Garfunkel's, you know, probably well-known collection, you know. A lot of good stuff in here. So there's four live tracks, which are for Emily Whenever May Find Her, The 59th Street Bridge Song, uh, Homer Bound, and Kathy's Song are the live tracks on here. This is an 80s repression on this label. Good cover too. And I also have a Canadian pressing on Columbia from 1972. Still in its shrink. A bit of the shrink has come off the back, but it's alright. And we're on the Columbia 2i label. I think it was on the 6i Columbia label in America. The Canadian well, seems to be a lot more flimsier. It seems to be flimsier. That one. Then we have the Simon and Garfunkel collection, 17 of their all time greatest recordings. This one's got a really nice cover to it. You got a lot of great tracks on here. CBS 1981. Not really much to say about the compilations. This was not released in the States, this was a European only release, I think. It's the UK print. So this was a European only release, I think. Then we have um, the concert in Central Park. This is a 1982 live album of Simon and Garfunkel's reunion concert. They'd split in Britain, which have water, but um, 
they reunited for a few benefit concerts. They did the Bridge Over Trouble Water Tour, then they split up, and then they did a few reunions at benefit concerts. But this was their first pro probably full concert that you reunited for. You get some songs from Paul Simon's solo career, as well as Swan's from Mark's solo career, as well as Simon Garfunkel's Together career. Nice cover. The gay got a good picture, and it comes with a booklet. It's a book. Pictures of Paul and Art, lyrics. Show with the crowd, and there's a nice photo of Paul and Art in there. We're now on a different label for some reason. We're on Jeffin or Geffen Records. For some reason, this is a UK pressing. Second LP is the same, so I won't bother pulling that one out. Then we have the Definitive Simon and Garfunkel, which is a 1991 compilation. This is quite hard to find. Uh, the CD you can, I'm sure you can get for um, a good pound or two, but the vinyl can be quite tricky. I managed to get this on Discogs for about ten pound, and uh, three pound fifty postage, so not that bad. And uh, this is a really good one. Um, if you find it for a good price, then definitely get it because um, you know it's a rare record. Um, it's on Columbia, it's on CBS. Sony, I think. Might put this up. This is 1991. So yeah, it's got a nice cover. I've got a couple of instrumental Simon and Garfunkel albums, which are not really that interesting. I, mean, I do have like a Beatles and instrument album as well. That's it. That's not that interesting. But anyway, your strings for pleasure plays Simon and Garfunkel. It's got a nice cover, but there again, instrument albums don't really interest me that much. Stereo, 1970, on MFC, music for pleasure. I got that in a charity shop here in my. When I was collecting Sam and Garfunkel records, this was the one I bought for some reason. So yeah, nice cover with Sunset. It's quite nice. Bridge over the genius of Simon and Garfunkel. The Tony Mansell singer. One that I've never really played and I don't really intend to play it. Could probably just singers singing the songs. I might be able to play the strings for a pleasure one someday. Get an idea of what that's like. So let's get the crack in, but uh, we're now gonna go over for, to the solo LPs and sing. Right, so uh, we're gonna do the solo singles and LPs. So we'll start off with Paul Simon, Mother and Child Reunion, backed with Paranoia Blues, 1972. It doesn't have its um, center or its original sleeve, but it was cheap to purchase. Slip sliding away. Uh, I think this is a foreign. Yep. Yeah, uh, Holland, made in Holland. Slip sliding away and something so right. I think this is for the Greatest Hits, etc. LP. And of course, you can call me Al. One of his best. And Gum Boots, 1986, both from the Graceland L album. Got one I got Funkel single. It's not in the best condition, but I got it quite cheap. Since I don't have you from and and I know both from the Fate for Breakfast album, the record is is quite cracked. You can see it's got a crack, but I've got the Fate for Breakfast LP, so it's not really an issue. It's also got some writing on the, the label, as you can see. For some reason, I'm gonna have the Paul Simon LPs. First one up is the Paul Simon uh, songbook. Uh, the reason why this is kind of, so it's doing a bit of glue. Is a good, okay. Nice to get that fixed. But anyway, these are Paul Simon recordings um, that Paul did in London, when he was living in London. Um, Simon and Garfunkel released Wednesday morning at 3 a.m., but that wasn't a big success. And so uh, after that, they went their separate ways for a bit. Paul went to live in England, London, and Art went back to uh, school at Columbia studying architecture. 
and Paul went into a London studio and recorded um, these songs, which he'd later re-record for Simon and Garfunkel. Some of which they'd later re-recorded for Past Stages, Mary in Time, um, and Sounds of Silence. But there's one Wednesday morning 3 a.m. track. He was my brother. Yeah, but uh, it's quite interesting. You know, this is an original. I think it's a 70s print. I'm not sure because you know the original copies. It's stereo, but I think it was fake stereo. It's been fake stereo. Like it's just really mono, but fake stereo. But I think this cover and the early copies were flipped. The pi this picture was flipped, like mirrored. Um, I think that's the original copies. I'm still missing quite a lot of Paul Simon's albums. Hopefully, gonna find them for the price. There goes Ryan Simon. I like uh, Kodachrome, An American Tune, uh, Lost Me Like a Rock, those ones. C -c Cover. Lyrics on the inside, the photos, and around the original CBS label. This is 1973. Paul Simon's song book was 1965. And I have a reissue. There goes Ryan Simon, which is on the Sunburst. CBS label, the orangey yellow label. We have uh, Great Six, etc., which has some of Paul Simon's. Uh, greatest hits. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. If you're not a Paul Simon fan, this is probably one for you. Get okay, over the lyrics. It's got the hype sticker on it, and this is on CBS. Nineteen seventy-seven. Okay. We have the album One Trip Pony from 1980, which is um, songs that Paul Simon wrote for the film, for the Paul Simon movie, One Trip Pony. Um, I like Late in the Evening, that's a pretty good one. One Trip Pony's not bad, but yeah, the other album's it's all right. It's a nice condition, this copy. This is quite a nice copy, nice spine. In a sleeve with the lyrics and photos from the film. And this is Paul's first new album, first album on Warner Brothers, 1980. We have a, a later German pressing of it. Same really. The text is not as different. The label's quite different. There's still one of those, which the layout's quite different. We have a uh, Hearts and Bones. I, I can do a bit of a better copy this one. This one's a bit water damaged to cover. Um, this was actually meant to be a Simon and Garfunkel so reunion album, but there was a bit of a row between Paul and Art. There was, the sessions were quite troubling, and then uh, Art left the project, and then Paul took Garfunkel's voice off the album. There are actually bootlegs of um, the Simon and Garfunkel alleged solo album, which I think was going to be called Cars Are Cars, or I think too much, but Hearts and Bones, the Warner Brothers record executive, I think, suggested Hearts and Bones would be a better title. I do like the title track. I like Tap Track Hearts and Bones. And the late great Johnny S is pretty good as well. This copy's not too bad. The sleeve's a bit busted. It's missing its original inner sleeve. And it's on Warner Brothers. It's a German European press. Yeah, I don't know what it's covered. The cover's a bit blurry pictures. It's just it looks like it was shot in front of a television. Mine has a Warner sticker for some reason. Less on Warner. We have Graceland, which is probably Paul Simon's f famous album, you know. Recorded in Africa, really good album. Boy in the Bubble, Graceland, uh, I Know What I Know, You Can Call Me Al. Um, yeah, really good album. 1986, In a Sleeve, and Warner Brothers, UK Press. So made in UK. Below the 33 and a third RPM.
The liner note's quite interesting. The liner note's quite interesting because Paul talks about, you know, the making of the album. We have a compilation called uh, Negotiation Love Songs, 1971 to 1986. So, yeah, really interesting enough. It's got a double LP set. One LP set, sorry. It's the second LP I'm showing. Yeah, interesting compilation. If you're not much of a Paul Simon fan, then maybe this one might be a bit better. This one's got some more stuff on it. This one's got more probably got more stuff on it. Then we have um, Rhythm of the Saints, 1990. Haven't yet heard this album, but I do like uh I'm not sure what song I like it, but I have heard some songs from the live LP. Um Concert in the Park. Um The Obvious Child's pretty good, I think. It's got a nice back picture. In a sleeve with the lyrics. Warner Brothers. So yeah, um, this is the live LP, the Paul Simon's concert in the park, 1981. This is quite rare to find now. Um, this is a rare LP from 1991. Copies this can be quite hard, but managed to find this at a record store for £10. He does some songs from the Rhythm of the Saints, you know, some of his songs from his solo career, uh, one's from Graceland, one's from his, um, um, Simon McGuff from Cuckoo Career, yeah, uh, actually Cuckoo Career from the Coast are quite good on the Rhythm of the Saints album, so there is quite a lot on there. Gatefall with the band, and there's the, oh, um, and this is Warner Brothers, 1991. So, if you find this thanks for a good price, do get it because it's quite hard to get. Then we have, I'm missing quite a lot of his um, albums, but we skipped to 2011 with So Beautiful So What. It's quite good, I'm quite like getting ready for Christmas Day, it's pretty good. And Love and Hard Times is quite good as well. Nice cover art, you know. Um, there's a lot of things on here. Comes with a sticker that says Rolling Stone magazine claims it's best album since Graceland. Well, I haven't yet heard the full album, but I'm hoping to hear it someday. It's got a nice black artwork inside, which is quite cool. Um, for some reason, my copy comes with two of the lyric inserts, so I'll show you one of them. Lyrics. The other one's the same, to be honest. And this is the record. 180 gram vinyl, I think. It's quite heavy. It's 2011. You get a download card, which I think might be, you know, now expired. So, uh, yep, probably no need to use that. But uh, I've got it digitally on Spotify. So. So there's that one. Now I've got Funko LPs. We have Angel Claire. I haven't yet heard a lot of these LPs. There's a lot of LPs I've yet to play, pull out and play. Uh, so, yeah. there's Angel Claire. This is his first one, 1973. This is a reissue on that label. Breakaway, which has a reunion song with Simon and Garfunkel, My Little Town, which is quite good. I quite like that one. I haven't yet heard the rest, but I'm hoping to hear the other stuff. Unfortunately, my copy's missing the inner sleeve, which I'm hoping, gonna, hoping to get a copy with the original inner sleeve. There's that one. CBS. Maybe original, I'm not sure. Uh, 
Yeah, not very much Keenan would cover for this one for some reason. I don't know, I just don't know why I don't really like the cover. The back's not that great either. We have a nice cover here, watermark. This is my first arc up on Little P. And I really like the um, cover for this one. This is quite a nice cover with the water and the loose kind of background. It has a height sticker on it. I haven't yet heard this one, but uh, it was quite interesting. In a sleeve with the lyrics. Or a CBS. Uh, this cup is a bit, bit scratchy, a bit more, but should hopefully play well. And hopefully it does play. Oh, and this one needs a bit of gluing at the bottom. That one. This one's got a nice cover. This one has a pretty good cover. Wait for breakfast. This one I've heard the first time. And I really like uh, Miss Unites, Since I Don't Have You and I know, and, and I Know. And the song Bright Eyes as well. Nice picture of art in the back with a nice bow, suit bow tie on. There's a front. <coughs> and this one is in its little sleeve too. Tells you who plays in the tracks. It's CBS 1979. So there we go. That's my Simon and Garfunkel vinyl collection done. I'm hoping to do more vinyl collections. Maybe do a vinyl update because I do have a few, quite a few new records to show. But uh, maybe that might come next week when I get more records or maybe in the next month or so when I get more records. And if I have enough records to show that update, I'll definitely do the vinyl update. But uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.